Hi guys, I'm Chantelle and I blog over at Intentional Homeschooling and have been, you know, sharing a video here weekly until I took a little break here apparently for a few weeks. Um, today I want to share a few different resources that I've purchased lately. I want to kind of like share inside of them and just um, tell you the things that we're liking about them, I guess. Um, but before I do, uh, I think for the next like month and a half, kind of till the end of 2020, there won't be a video every week. It may be every other week-ish. I'm not really gonna put myself, like, lock myself in and say exactly there will be every other week or anything. I have tons of ideas. Honestly, I've just kind of mm, maybe been overwhelmed slash uninspired slash, I don't know, something. And I just haven't, like, wanted to push myself to film videos a whole lot. Like, I still am on my book channel, um, but I haven't as much here. I would love to get back to it, though, because I do generally enjoy it, but just needed a bit of a break for the next little while. So I have a couple videos I want to get out for sure by the end of the year. Um, and then maybe in 2021, I'll kind of like continue with the weekly. Anyway, let's get onto the books. And uh, I have like a variety here, like workbook and a game and a couple different books. Um, this is a much smaller haul than my previous resource hauls, uh, but I think there's some really good stuff here. So this first one is the book um, Dark Shadows. This is a Chicken Squad adventure. This is not book one. Um, oh, I, book one is just called The Chicken Squad. Um, I, we've gotten these from the library before. They have like really big words. They're great for um, beginner readers. I bought this for my son. He's kind of like beginner chapter book kind of stage. And these are hilarious books. They're adorable, have il adorable illustrations. And I just thought this would be a really good one to have. I bought this as well as um, a couple more books on this stack from Book Outlet. They have discounted books where people have returned books and then they're like in brand new condition, but they've been returned and you can get them for like a third of the price. So I like to buy a lot of our books from there. Next up is Investigators. Um, one of my friends here on YouTube shared this with us. This is like a graphic novel um, with alligators who are investigators. We haven't read this yet. This is another one for my son. Um, it has like an average amount of words, I think, for a kid's um, graphic novel. I think my son will really like this. It looks like it's pretty silly and, you know, all things that boys really enjoy. This next book is a gift that I got from a friend. Um, I kind of think I met her here on YouTube and then like Instagram and stuff. And she was so sweet when she found out that this was a book that I wanted to own. And I can't believe she offered to send me her copy. I don't know if she had two copies or if she just wasn't reading this, um, but she was absolutely so sweet because she sent it out to me in Canada. And I know shipping to here is not great. Uh, it's, it's a lot. And she sent me this book, Pocket Full of Pine Cones. Like, and this is like a big book. Um, so this is Karen Andreola. This is told, it's like a fiction story, but it really inspires um, nature study. Like it, it tells of a mother who decides to teach her kids nature study and have them like um, have nature journals. And, but it tells it in a fiction way, but yet it feels so real. Uh, I'm not sure if that's the best way to explain it, but I read this last summer, I think, a year and a half ago, and really enjoyed it, and it inspired me to get my kids to keep nature journals for a while. We aren't right now. It happens. Um, but I still really love the book, and I wanted to kind of reread it every year or so, because 
nature journaling isn't something that comes naturally to me. Um, I think this will kind of like help inspire me and at least give us a little kick to, you know, keep a nature journal for a few months every year. So yeah, I'm, I feel beyond blessed that she like sent me her copy. That was really sweet of her. So I would love it if you would um, head over to Shalisa's channel at Sodbuster Living. I'm going to leave it linked below and I would love it if you would follow her. She shares like tons of like homeschool day in the life, um, really good budgeting tips. Um, that woman, she can live on a budget like nobody's business and uh, I can't believe she, you know, used her money to send this to me. It just, it blows me away. Next up, I was trying to remember if I shared this in my last haul or not, and I didn't go back and check, but I'm pretty sure I did not. And this is the Encyclopedia of Animals. Um, this is this one was from Book, Out, book Outlet as well, and you can't look inside the book there, so I was Googling it to look inside, and I was so excited that I got this book for so cheap and it has amazing illustrations of all sorts of different animals. This is going to be such a great resource for our homeschool. Um, I love the illustrations and the information and like it talks about the, um, tells you the name and a bit about the animal and the size and the diet and where they're found. And I like that the illustrations aren't like, you know, like necessarily realistic illustrations, but they're, they're done in such a creative way. Um, I can just see my kids pouring over this book for a long time. And then and if you know our homeschool and how we've been like kind of unschooling these last number of months, um, this may seem a little weird, but I bought a math workbook for my son. Um, so this is a grade two math workbook, which is where he's at. And we've done a few pages in here. The reason I purchased this was because I realized like, I know he knows math, but I realized like maybe I haven't really showed him how to like do visual math so much like even just like how an addition question is set up like he can tell you what is like i don't know 10 plus 5 or whatever but like the, i haven't for quite some time showed him how to actually write it out and i think that's something that everyone should know so we got this and he's cruising through it i mean we're not doing it a lot but he's doing his pages really quickly when i tell him to do one um so yeah we do make use of workbooks in our home. My daughter has one from last year that she recently grabbed and has been doing like all the data management pages. And we kind of just use this as a supplement. Like honestly, I could go to the internet and print out pages, but I paid $9 for this. And you know, it has like over 200 pages. I don't think I could print this for as cheap as just buying the entire book. Um, I also, I think, I got this one at Costco. Um, I often look at like dollar stores because they generally have like pretty decent sized workbooks for like under $5. So yeah, I don't think we need to be a slave to the workbook. That's not my philosophy, but I like to use it as a resource. So if there's something we want to do, we do it. I have no trouble skipping over questions or pages or anything like that. We kind of just pick and choose as we go.
is a game. This is called, oh, it's probably gonna make a clattering sound. That wasn't too bad. Um, this is Gridopolis. This is a game that the game company sent to me. It's pretty much like checkers, but multi-level. It's like 3D plus checkers. Um, yeah, it's, it took my brain like a moment to figure this out, how this works. I'm not going to describe it all now, but you, 3D checkers, three level checkers, where you can have up to four players. Okay, so we played this together as a family a while ago and it was so much fun. So if you're like, oh, if you're at the top here, you can jump people in the middle and it hurt my brain in such a good way. Like, I think my kids got it faster than me. I don't know, it, it just it took me a minute to understand. And once I got it, it's like, it's so simple and yet it, it takes a lot of your brain power. It was so much fun. They've done a really good job here. So like this is your regular pawn and then when you king it, you just flip it over. So you don't have to like double stack like you do with checkers. And then there's like teleporters and there's um, extra parts where you can add onto the board and a, like, um, oh, it's called a blocker box where you can like pretty much void out an entire uh, square slash, I guess there's circles here, um, section so people can't even jump there. Uh, it's very, very creative, very well done, very simple and yet like complex at the same time. Um, I can see us playing this for years to come. Okay, so it's totally a different day, but I did actually remember a few different things that I wanted to include in this haul. I thought about waiting, but it's just gonna to be too long. And I kinda of wanna share about these now. So I think I have four other things that I want to share. Uh, the first one is we got a Google Home Mini. Uh, Spotify was doing a thing where you can get a free one, whatever. So we didn't actually pay for it. And I was kinda of hesitant because Google, like listening to everything kinda of creeps me out. But it was very interesting the first day we got it, how many good questions the kids were asking Google. And like, I want to be here to supervise. Obviously I don't want, I want to be careful, I guess. Um, but there were some really good questions. I actually wrote a list of a few of them. Randomly, they asked, are bikes dangerous? When was the first car invented? A common Canadian cat names. When was the Lord of the, Ring, Lord of the Rings published? Uh, when was it filmed? How or where does fresh water come from? What language do they speak in Mongolia? Where is the largest chocolate factory? And when does hunting season start? We don't even hunt. I have no idea where that came from. Um, but there's been a few things where they're like, what does this word mean? Or like, what, what is this thing or whatever? And I'm like, I don't know, but we can ask Google. And that kind of used to be my like answer. Like, oh, I'll, I'll look it up on Google. But usually my hands were full and I couldn't do it at that moment. And then I forgot about it. And now it's just like, we can just ask. We constantly are setting timers. Um, my kids are reading for 15 minutes each day and they can just like ask Google to set a timer for them. That's been really helpful. And I've been surprised at how much um, it's been a positive addition into our home. The second thing is really simple, but I got my kids each um, small little word searches. These are great for like throwing in the bag when we go to church and stuff. Um, and these are not like specifically kids ones, but it's been really good, especially for my son, just uh, as he's been like working on spelling and reading and writing, uh, just to, you know, like help him think about how words are spelt. Um, yeah, they're both like a nice little activity throughout the day and really nice to have like in the bag when you know, you're know you out and about and need kids to be entertained a little bit. Oh, and this isn't a homeschool enrichment thing at all, but I do now have bookish shirts available. I'm going to leave the link below for those. Okay, and then the next two things are ones that I was sent by some nice online homeschooling moms who are friends and I want to help them, um, you know, like help promote their products, but also like be able to use them and be able to review them. So I've got two different things here. Let's start with this one. Um, 
I didn't print out all the pages, but this is a simple guide to morning time. This is by Fresh Wanderings. I will leave all the information down below. But every month she puts out a morning bundle. And in her morning bundle, I think maybe what's included varies each time, but this one has music, poetry, art, scripture, nature study, craft, character study, and a recipe. And this is a really good time to like gather as a family. Her morning time bundles are only five dollars. So you know, you don't have to use everything. You don't feel like you have to use every bit of it. Um, for us, we are Canadian and there are a few like kind of American things in here. I'm not against learning American history and all that, um, but obviously it has more of a focus on America than we are interested in. Um, but like, I appreciate um, how much time and energy and attention to detail, a detail she's put into these. If you're looking for a way to like enrich your homeschool, I would suggest checking this out. Um, honestly, I feel like if you did one of the morning time bundles each month, plus a little bit of reading and maybe a little bit of math, you pretty much have your whole homeschool done. So often we have these ideas of what school should look like because of, you know, school. And I feel like this is a really good way to like reset kind of your idea on what it should look like. And then my next one here is The Kind Kingdom. This is by The Peaceful Press. And um, they have a number of like younger kid, like preschool and kindergarten kind of studies, but this is for a little bit older. So this is perfect for my kids. And the focus on this is all like, um, it's kind of like European history plus like folk tales and stuff. So it's, it's pretty much just like a literature curriculum. Um, and you can like, include nature study and what else do they have here? They have weather. So month one, uh, you read the magician's nephew and some grim fairy tales. You learn about the kings and queens of England and the early middle ages. You learn about seeds, bees, gardens, and weather. Like, yeah, it's, it's amazing. We haven't started this yet. I thought because of um, month one is magician's nephew, month two is the line of the witch in the wardrobe. I was kind of thinking like November, December would be a good time to start. And you go through um, the entire Narnia, and then also uh, some Shakespeare, uh, Grimm's fairy tales, Winnie the Pooh, and like you learn about communism. <laughs> like this is such a good bundle. Um, I don't remember offhand how much this is. I'll put it on the screen. Uh, but if you're like wanting, I, I love European history, and my kids love the Middle Ages and the kings and queens, and this is so perfect for us. Um, our plan is to go over this for the next few months. Probably, probably once again, starting December or January. Um, but if you're kind of looking for pretty much a complete curriculum for a really low price that you can do with a variety of ages, they also, I believe there is like um, copy worksheets or tracing sheets if you have younger kids. Uh, there's information for like spelling. Like she breaks it down each day. She's got your like Bible, your reading, your language arts, your science and history, your math, your phonics, spelling, grammar, free reading and practical skills slash art. Like this is your entire day. This is like more than we do in a normal day. Honestly, we probably won't do everything out of here. That's fine. I like to like, you know, make things work for our family, but I feel like this will also enrich our homeschool so much. And I'm really looking forward to this. film a uh, wrap up here at the end I'll like jump back to that video that I previously filmed and yeah we'll go from there okay that is our like small resource haul from the last little while I would love to hear if you have bought or received or been gifted any cool resources lately anything you think we should check out um, I would like to do another library haul soon because we've been making good use of the library since it's been open again and yeah I will be back at some point Whenever I post a video, it will be a Tuesday. I'm just not sure which Tuesday coming up here, but thanks again for watching guys. I appreciate you being here. <music>